and even at a 4% appreciation. And we haven't seen those numbers in, I mean, everything we're talking about is 9, 10, 40%. Yeah. Ridiculous. That I call icing on the cake. Wall Street is running away from the housing market, but why? Hmm. So I know the last couple of years, we've been seeing a lot of in the news about these institutional buyers, these mm -hmm. I buyers buying up all, all this property, single family homes across the nation and everyone and leading everyone to believe we're going to become a renter nation. Right, right, right. right. I saw a lot of art. Yeah, I've I, I seen some material on that. So this article is saying that that machine is coming, is slowing down and almost coming to a screeching uh, oh, halt. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what... Hmm. So why is that? So I kind of re I, I read I read this, and take a look at this graph for instance. So you could kind of see. So the green is homes bought, and the black is homes sold. Okay, by by the invitation homes. They're think of them as oh. like a, an eye buyer. Like a okay, big okay, the, the institutional institution mm -hmm. institutional. Uh, I investor. think they are the largest owner of single family homes. It says they own eighty three thousand single family homes. Okay, so. It's pretty much saying they're no longer in a buying freeze. They're in on a buying spree, excuse me. And that because of the interest rates trending the way they are and home prices from what they're forecasting trending downward, uh -huh. it's just, it's not, the numbers aren't making sense for it to be a sound investment anymore. I see. So, so they are no longer purchasing as many homes as they were. And that was a big problem. Yeah, I thought that was a big problem because, uh, yeah, the, you're you're right. We get back to the being a nation of renters, which that is not good. So this is actually an opportunity. I remember hearing stories of open door mm -hmm. and eye bars like that <laughs> coming into Austin, right? Because Austin was the hot spot. Yeah, and buying up all these properties for way over what they were valued because interest rates were so low. And of course, these people were like, heck yeah, you don't want to do a home inspection and you're going to offer me 100000 more than what it's worth to so open door. For, we'll use them as an example. Yeah. So they sold because why wouldn't you? And now all those big institutions are either stopping or they actually took a, head, a big loss mm -hmm. because again, you can't, even though real estate is a good investment, I think for the individual- Right, if you're looking at it from a institutional, like a, a grander scale, yeah. there's a lot more. It can't, they're not the same. They're not the same, no. right? Because you have to hold on to these assets. You, they have to pay a mortgage, right? They have to pay an interest rate. Right? These institutional buyers, they have to pay all these expenses. And is and the only way it makes sense of is if the housing appreciation continues to go up, which it's not because. We're, Things are normally off, right? We're not right. seeing these crazy appreciation rates anymore. And we'll look at that at the local numbers too. I have it for Cedar Park and Leander mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. January to April of the numbers trending downward, right? but normalizing. I want to be very clear. They're trending downward, but it's a it's normalizing market because mm. we just went from this tip, 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 top of the mountain, right? The height of the pandemic when everything was up. Now we're kind of still normalizing, coming back down to what a normal market should be, what these mark, what a buyer is willing to pay market value for a home. Got That's it. That's what I'm saying. Got it. Got it. I see. Hmm. So everyone who is freaking out, like the Wall Street is going to continue to be strong and just push people around and buy all these homes. Yeah. That That's not happening. Well, they were buying like lots. They were buying communities from, uh, from uh, builders mm -hmm. that builders weren't able to move the uh, inventory, m move the inventory. Yeah. So you had, uh, uh, you had institutional inv institutional investors coming in and just buying the entire community and turning them into rentals. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. I'm kind of glad imagine? that happened as far as them buying because they messed up so bad by taking, they took such a loss, like a, hundreds of millions of dollars of a loss buying up by all selling, these homes. By right? selling them that way. And, yeah. and, and, there's still, it's kind of funny because there's still a home, if I'm not mistaken, as I drive up here, that has the open door sign that's yeah. been there for like the last six months. And every time I look, I, I drive past, I'm like, I know that homes, like what they have it listed at is way beyond. They're trying to recoup their losses, but every time I'm seeing it, like their price reduction, price reduction, price reduction, 
And I'm like, you're losing money. And they're still paying the holding costs, right? So you have to all these all, all these things to keep in mind. And I guess the big point I'm trying to make is that I think they now see that real estate, as far as in, from an investment perspective, it does it. don't touch single family homes. Ah, I see. I see. So yeah. stick to commercial, stick the bigger to, stuff, yeah. but single family homes is too much. There's too many variables and the market fluctuates. Right. Right. And right. you can't time it, even with the thing of how limitless their pockets are. And they still couldn't time it, right? Because, it, again, there's it's just way too many variables to keep in mind. So I thought that article was really interesting. That's why I brought it up. Now I just pulled up the numbers for Austin. So left to right. I'm going to look from left to right. Uh huh. Can I zoom in here? Oh, no, I can click on this. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to quickly run through this. So January this year, mm -hmm. two things to look at. Medium price, 525. Right? Okay. Days on market. 63 days on market. That's that's normal. That's normal. Yeah, that right. is actually really good. It's not normal if you are thinking still like last year or last two years where it was like two weeks, mm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and again, we have to get uh, be aware of our biases, especially from like the, our recency bias when we're looking at and comparing it to like the high of the market to like what it is now. Okay. Okay, so 525 medium price for Austin. 63 days on market, 2.1 months of inventory. That's 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 still technically a seller's market. That is. Uh, but let's let me, let's let's look at this. So again, left to right, January, and then all on the far right is April. Okay, so let's, let's look, look at, at April. April. So now we have 3.2 months of inventory. That's so that's up. Inventory, yeah, inventory, months of inventory is, is creeping up, right? We had 2.1, 2.2, 2.8. Okay. So we see that. And Ooh, I love this. The medium price, it's still 566, right? For April. But and in January, it was what? 525. Mm -hmm. So it still went up. Still but going up. It's still you'll see that it, there's a little down arrow. So that's comparing it to what it was of April of last year, April 2022. Well, see... I feel that that mm -hmm. arrow is misleading, meaning that it dropped 11.6%. 11 but we have to say from what? Because if it was if it was up, you know, 50% appreciation and it's down 11, well, the net is still very positive. If you had the house for a long time, but if you bought like last year, then you're probably in the red. Wait, but what's a long time? We're talking. Well, I'm saying like it, 2020. You, you usually get 20, the, 20, the equity 20, 20. if you had if you had the home for like five plus years. But let me let me show you that because okay. I have that number right here, right? So let's remember that five sixty six, mm -hmm. and it says it's down eleven percent compared to April of twenty twenty two. So April of not April, but this is of twenty twenty two, the whole year mm -hmm. five ninety, the median price, right? That was for the whole year. So we went from 590 to 566. So you can kind of see how it would be because all of last year was a peak year, right? right. We had high record high prices for homes in, in, in Austin. So that's come down a lot starting this year. So let's go back in time a little bit to 2020. Okay. okay. All right. Because I have that here too. All right. Let's check so it out. 2020, medium price. See that? 424. 24. Yeah, and what was it at at the peak? The peak we would 590? say five ninety. Mm -hmm. So can you do the math real quick? I'm doing it. Uh, five ninety to four twenty four. I think that's thirty percent. But let me redo it. Yeah, it's thirty percent. Yeah, it's twenty nine percent, which is crazy. That's not normal at no, all. No, that's twenty nine twenty nine percent. That so then when we drop, how much did it drop? Pull it up again. So April of this year, eleven percent. Okay, so. I mean, we're still up, yeah, almost twenty percent, yeah, almost twenty percent. So, see, this is a good. I, I'm so glad you pulled this up because this goes to show how anything can be kind of twisted and and that and knowing how to tell a story with the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of hard to see, like, hey, you see an arrow pointing down, but we look from January to last month, and then the numbers are kind of going up. So it's like, okay, there's a lot of if you don't see this every day. How do you know how to like read it and, and like yeah. actually comprehend this? So yep. yeah, we kind of did that right there. I like that. Yeah. All right. That was for Austin, folks. 
Leanne and Leander and Cedar Park tell a different story. Oh, I want to see. Okay, I want to see Leander. Let's look at Leander. You want to look at January or April? No, April, April. April. Let's go with April. Let's go okay. with the most recent. So close sales are down twenty one. Two months of inventory. All mm -hmm. right, all right. Four sixty three is a median down 12 percent. so it looks like everything this year has been down about look at this price distribution this is it's such it's so small but so impactful because i remember last time we looked at this we saw like the like the concentration the majority like in the 300 400 or three to 500 range right mm. now we're seeing like the majority of these sales in the 400 plus range mm. So you could see that the appreciation is there and it's not going anywhere because that's the majority of the, the prices of the homes being sold in this area. Right. Yeah, it's going up. Right. Days on market, days to close, 17, 117 days to... And look, that's, yeah. that's pretty... In one year, that's pretty impressive. To go from 0.6, I'm looking at months of inventory, in April of last year to 2.1 yeah. in one year, that's really good. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I've ever. I wonder. I mean, now I'm curious if California uh, has as much oh. construction, like and keeping up like we are. Because no. I tell you, every time I drive here or I'm just driving around, you just see construction, not just in residential, but commercial, and just stuff is moving and moving. I'm like, man, this place is like growing like crazy. Okay. So we were looking at medium, right? Medium price for Leander, four sixty three. Right. January this year, four ninety nine. So it mm -hmm. dropped. So what does twenty twenty one look like? Twenty twenty one is four sixty. The height was twenty twenty two at five ten. Wait, 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 wait! No, go back to twenty twenty one. Yeah, look at that. That's forty six percent appreciation. From last the previous from year. the previous year, that's what I wanted to see. Mm. You see that forty six percent appreciation. So we got to go back to twenty twenty. Do you have twenty twenty? Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Look at that three fourteen. Pull it up. Click on it right there. Three hundred and fourteen, and that is after a ten percent appreciation. Look at the month of months of inventory. Oh my God, point one percent. There was nothing. So I guess we can kind of see it if you could picture it from 2020, everything's like, this is like, think of it like skyrocketing, like a mountain, right? Yeah. Because you went from 9.3 to 46 to 10.9. And now we're kind of down in January, up a little bit again, down again. So now we're kind of like coming back down the hill this year Yeah. where prices are starting to normalize. I guess that's the picture I'm trying to tell, yep. right? Now we're starting to come down the hill very slowly. We're not dropping off yet, but very slowly because we just... The last couple since 2020, we saw how, right. how much it, 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 we just climbed. So let me ask you a question, Omar. Yes. Is it a good time to buy? Rent going up. Mm -hmm. you, you need to move up because a bigger house and you want to move into a better school district from where wherever you're renting. Those are right. all good reasons to move. Right. Yeah. And so, those, so motivation, I guess, is what we're getting at here. If your motivation is right and it makes sense financially, heck yeah, right now is a good time to buy. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Uh, you saw you saw how I kind of back led you into that. <laughs> you, you, you were well. You were giving me scenarios where it made sense because you've asked me a very open ending question. Is now a good time to buy? It depends. I knew where I was going, and I'm sorry to do that to you, no, but <laughs> I, know. I knew what you were doing. That's, yeah, that was kind of hilarious to do it. Um, so let's see, what else do we have on the agenda here? What do you think for the summer? If you're on the fence to buy, or if you're on the fence to sell. What, what would be your two cents? If you're renting and your rents go up and you, yeah, you're tired of that. You're tired of throwing away your money, you know, because when you rent, you don't, all you do is get, you know, time, you know, to live in that property, in that house for that month. The moment you stop rent uh, paying, that's it. You're done. You walk away and mm. you have nothing. Um, that's not the case with the home, right? You're paying down your own mortgage payment. And when you're renting, you are paying a mortgage payment. It's just not your mortgage payment. It's your landlord's payment. So 
again, if the rents go up and I see them consistently go up, then yes, it's time to consider. Um, again, I was talking about schools, better schools, um, commute. Um, I mean, there's a number of reasons. And I think the best way to figure out if you, um, if it's the right time to buy for you is to do a full analysis. Look at uh, what your income is. Look at what your expenses, your fixed expenses are. Um, see if uh, maybe if you have to pay two, $300 more per month, if it's worth it, if you got a closer commute or, I mean, there's a a dozen of, uh, a number of uh, reasons, dozens of reasons where, you know, you can, you know, see and, and, and analyze uh, and choose if it's the right time to buy or not. I hear you. Okay. Was that anything else? No, that's okay. all I got. Do you want me to continue? No, I was going to go. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm thinking if interest rates remain the same, which I think from what I've seen, this was like the last interest rate kind of hike that we're going to see for the rest of the year, that we're going to probably still see prices slowly still decline as the summer goes through, mm. right? So if you're on a timeline where you have maybe a few months, like let's say you have 90 days you want to give yourself because you have time to shop around, mm -hmm. then I say the longer you wait, maybe towards the end of the summer, you're going to probably get the best bang for your buck, mm. right? If you have 30 days or less, right? Because of what you said, you want your kids to, because during the summertime is the summer break, right? So you mm -hmm. want this, your kid to start school in the fall for um, for the new school district. And summer is the only time you want to do it. And looking at how long days are on the market, 60 plus days, and knowing that we're still seeing multiple offer situations in Austin, depending on the area and like how it's priced, then yeah, it, you would, it would be who of you to buy sooner rather than later if that's your timeline where it's a lot more shorter. Right. Okay. So let me get this straight. Go ahead. It's always a good and a bad time to buy. It depends. It's always a good it and depends. bad. So again, yeah, it all depends. Mm -hmm. It all depends. And you pulled up all that appreciation, 4%, 20%, 30%. We've been talking about the last three years. Mm -hmm. You know, I've looked at the 63. If we take a 63-year historical view, mm -hmm. Did you know in Travis County, it's 4.4% appreciation? 4.4. 4.4, which is amazing. I think that is outstanding because that same house that you bought at 300000 in, uh, let's see, in um, in five years, it's going to be, what, 20% uh, more. So what is that? Three, three, 360. That's if you take a 63-year appreciation. Um or 63 year uh, time frame, historical mm -hmm. time frame. Now, why do I go with the 63 year? Because there's a bunch of recessions. There's at least five recessions within that 63 year period. Mm. So there's ups and downs along the way. And that's how you can forecast a little more conservatively um, what the future value of that home is. And you got to realize when you buy a home, you buy that $300,000 home uh, and you put zero down. Let's just just to keep the math simple, mm -hmm. you put three hundred thousand or th um, zero down, and in five years it's going to be worth three hundred and sixty thousand. And during that time, instead of throwing away your money to rent, you are actually paying down that principal. So let's just say by the end of that five years, its uh, principal balance is at two forty. So now you got sixty thousand dollars that you've been kind of saving and and you know it, it it's kind of a forced sales uh, or forced a savings account right mm. sixty thousand and then you got appreciation of sixty thousand that's a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and if we factor in the interest rate re uh, deduction the benefit of uh, owning a home is that you can deduct your mortgage interest mm. uh, on the your federal income taxes and that reduces your tax liability. So you combine all those and you're looking now at a net gain of what is that uh, 60, 60, 12, maybe about 150,000 in five years. If you say decide to sell this house, your, your net gain is going to be about 150,000. If you don't buy anything and you continue to rent, how much is that number? What if you're paying $2,000 a month in uh 
that's what, 24,000 a year? 2024? Yep. Damn, 24 yep. times five years? That's 125,000 that you will pay. That's in the red. That's negative as opposed to the other way around if you mm -hmm. own a home. And even at a 4% appreciation, and we haven't seen those numbers in, I mean, everything we're talking about is 9, 10, 40%. Yeah. Ridiculous. That I call icing on the cake. Okay. So if it does appreciate 20%, yay, good, but don't count on it. Just focus on the 4% mm. and you're still going to win. Just with that math I did right there. You said something really fast. I just really want to just repeat it. You talked about the, I guess, the appreciation, right? Right. Of 4% in five years. And you also talked about the money that you're paying in the mortgage. Yeah. Right. Repeat those two numbers and explain that real quick. Okay. So um, let's just say that your payment is $2,000 a month. Okay. Okay. Out of that $2,000, $500, and I'm just using the, just Simple random math. numbers. Simple math. Yeah. Just, yeah. Out of the $2,000 uh, that you're paying, 500 of it is going towards your principal, principal pay down. So you're paying down your debt. You're not just throwing away your money, you know, like when you rent. You're paying down your own debt. Okay. Okay. That's what I like to call like a forced savings account because you're kind of forced to pay that down. Okay. But it's not being thrown away. So you can't really factor that as part of the mortgage payment as well. I mean, you have to, but you kind of have to separate it because that's paying down a debt. Okay. It's not money just thrown away. I'm following. Yeah. And then the mortgage interest, say you earn a hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um and you let's see, you you earn a hundred thousand dollars and your payment is three thousand a month. So that's thirty six thousand a year. Mm -hmm. Six thousand of that is principal, uh, pay down. Mm -hmm. And then you have the other thirty thousand that are mortgage interest and property taxes. Okay. Well, that's tax deductible. So what that means is instead of earning a hundred thousand in the eyes of the IRS. IRS. Now you earn minus thirty. Mm -hmm. So now it's seventy thousand. You get taxed on seventy thousand instead of the one hundred thousand of your income. Yep. So hundred thousand, twenty percent tax bracket. That's twenty thousand. That's how much you have to pay the IRS for. You know, mm -hmm. you know, in the income tax. Well, if it's seventy thousand, still at that twenty percent tax bracket. Uh, that's fourteen thousand. So that's six thousand dollars less. So you have to take that into account as well. And I didn't really touch on that in this uh, example I was giving earlier, but you have to consider. I didn't even consider that. That just adds to it. That's more icing on the cake. Mm, All I, I did is a little bit of appreciation, very very conservative uh, appreciation, and the principal pay down. Just those two alone already. Um, make it such a huge, huge. So everybody benefit. who's renting, their <laughs> aim should be to, to buy. get to get to home ownership as quickly as possible to take advantage of the tax, yes, tax savings and the, I guess the equity that you're building yes. and the appreciation that we're getting here in Austin. So yes. it makes sense. That's what I, that should be the end goal. Yes, absolutely. So so I've I've gotten some of these um, uh, um, like cases where. Oh, what if it doesn't appreciate? And you know, I I go, you know what? Let's just do zero appreciation. Stays the same. 300,000, that's it, done. So even if in 5 years that property is is still worth 300,000, think mm -hmm. about this. No appreciation gain, but you did pay $50,000 into the principal balance. Mm -hmm. So that money's not lost. And then what about the mortgage interest? Uh, deduction with the IRS, the, the savings from that, the savings from that. Mm -hmm. Let's factor those in. Those are tangible. Those are always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Appreciation, maybe not. You're right. Okay, let's go zero, but the other are going to be there. Oh, I just so. thought of it this way. So it's like you just we said three buckets, right? The mm -hmm. tax savings, the appreciation, and then the principal, right? Yes. So oh, as well, long as you as long as you're getting two of the three, great. One of the three, great. If you're getting all three, fantastic. But yeah. just, it's all up. It's all upside. Right. It's all an upside. Mm -hmm. And people fail to see see that because they compare that three thousand dollar monthly payment uh against a two thousand dollar 
you know, rental payment. Mm -hmm. Those are not apple to apple comparisons. You have to be, you have to consider the benefit uh, of the uh, tax deduction and the principal pay down. And then the icing on the cake on the mortgage uh, uh, cake is, or the, um, the home ownership cake is, <laughs> And it's the appreciation. It's really that one that's like a variable. I feel like the tax saving, that's going to happen regardless. Yes. And then the principal, that's happening regardless. Yeah, that's happening So the regardless. icing is just the appreciation. The appreciation. And the likelihood of that happening in Austin is favorable. <laughs> well, it's 40. We saw As 40%. We, saw. we saw 11%. We saw yeah. some insane numbers. And so when people say, oh, it only appreciated you know, 5%. Yeah. Well, that's, that's okay. Even if that's it appreciates great. zero- you're still good because we're talking big numbers here. Yes, you know, five percent of a couple hundred thousand dollars—that's big money. Yeah, that's, that's big money. Still, that's still good. That's year over year. Yeah. Now, again, let me recap it: sixty-three year historical view. Yeah, four percent, four point four percent appreciation. So, with all the recessions, with all the ups and downs, you're still going to climb slowly. Yeah, that's that's pretty well. That is, that's great. Yeah, that's, great. that's that's like one of the, like when they say, I guess the secrets of home ownership or like the, you know, why you should get into it. I mean, right. that's four percent over multiple, like you said, multiple recessions. Yeah, and you're we're still in the green. Yeah, I and think. that's the remember that's the icing on the cake. Icing part. on the cake. Yeah. Okay, that's not the whole benefit of home ownership. And then if you buy a, an investment property, all every single expense, mortgage interest, insurance. uh, uh, mortgage uh, interest. Um, I don't even know what I said, but any expense that you have from that property is all tax deductible. So, if you if your income is a hundred thousand and you now you're renting this and you have a hundred and fifty thousand uh, in income, but then you write off, you know, eighty thousand dollars worth of of expenses, repairs, or whatever. Now. Um, now your tax liability is significantly lower and mm. and you pay less taxes. And that is good. Paying less taxes is good, right? I mean, that's what we want. Yeah. yeah. As long it's, as it's done legally. Right. Of and and, and <laughs> the, system, the system is built to incentivize people to do that, right? right? To, well, take, to, help, to give advantages to help with your yeah. earned income, to take, to take deduct from your earned income. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all these self-made billionaires, I'm saying billionaires, Started in real estate because that's the easiest way to accumulate wealth. And do you know why? Because of the tax? Nope. Because everybody needs a home to live in. All right. <laughs> right? I mean. Yeah. 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 It's one of the basic needs of life. Yeah. 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 And you know what else they're not making? Oh, yeah. The land. Land. Is land. land, land, is, land finite. is finite. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So get in. Oh, I like how we ended that.